Welcome back for another video. In this series, we get data from top managers every week, including their transfer plans, captaincy, chip usage and more. This wisdom of the crowd approach to FPL will help us make better decisions throughout the season. If you're new around here, make sure you're subscribing. There's a lot to think about this week, with a blank gaming next, and another one in just a few weeks. So let's start with the manager highlight. And it's one of your favourites, FPL Spaceman's taken the top spot with a huge score of 126 points last game week, which has moved him up to 347th in the world. He finished first in the world on FPL Review's massive data model last season and is on course for another top season. We've now got two experts in the top 1k and 21 in the top 10k. Really impressive at this point with a good chunk of the season to go still. So let's move on to transfers. Only 4% are in the luxury position of being able to roll the transfer this week. 43% are making one transfer, 42% are making two, and 7% are making three. We've got 27 experts taking a minus four hit this week, and four are taking a minus eight. If it makes sense for your team, don't be afraid to take a hit, especially if it's needed to get 11 players out. Look for players with some potential to repay the hit this week, or if not in the coming game weeks. A hit doesn't necessarily have to be repaid straight away if you'll be using that player more in the coming game weeks. They just need to outscore what you would have been lined up with instead over a number of weeks. 4% have got their wildcard active this week, and we've got a couple of wildcards from the experts to look at later. So which players are they spending all these transfers on? The top transfer in is He Chan, joining 43% of teams, and Jota's leaving 59% of teams. So why are so many buying Huang? Sheffield United next, which is a clear fixture to target this season. No one's conceded more than their 65 goals, Burnley a second worst and 55 conceded. He's scored 10 times this season, he's got good underlying numbers. For example, if we look at minutes per expected goals this season, for him it's every 243 minutes, which is comparable to Jota, Son and Gordon. He could even be on penalties as well. He did take one earlier in the season, though Sarabia wasn't on the pitch, he has a good record as well. And then Wolves have got Newcastle, who are one of the worst for expected goals over the last six game weeks, and then they've got Fulham home. Neto is a very good alternative though, who 8% have bought instead. He's got two goals, 11 assists, and he has been ticking along consistently himself. So both are great picks, and they're about the same price, at 5.5 mil and 5.8 mil. Darwin's been sold by 46%. They're moving fast to shake off the double game week 25 players and move on. 7% have sold Van Dijk, 5% have sold Luis Diaz. Solanke is the second top transfer in, with 32% buying him. It's not a great entry point facing Man City, but he does have Burnley game at 27, and then he's got the double game at 28, where he's basically a must-have. Liverpool and City face one another that week as well, so that might deter Haaland captaincy. So Solanke is going to be a hugely popular captain with two home games to Sheffield United and Luton. If you've got both Darwin and Jota, you might find that selling Jota works this week and then Darwin next week to attack the fixtures better. 20% are buying Powell, who's home to Forest this week, and as we know he definitely plays in Gameweek 29. These are the latest blank Gameweek 29 percentages from Ben Crellin. West Ham, Villa, Fulham, Tottenham, Burnley and Brentford will definitely play. The rest will be decided next week after the FA Cup 5th round. So this time next week we'll know exactly what's going on. One sound strategy is to buy the likes of Douglas Louise, Bowen or Powell to add a definite Gameweek 29 player to your team with a view to saving the free hit that week. Kelleher's joining 3% of teams, and that will be the wildcarders. No fixture this week of course, but Allison is out injured till the end of March. So as you can see here, if Man United beat Forest, then Man United will blank in game at 29, whereas if Forest beat Man United in the FA Cup, or if Luton beat City, then Luton are the ones that blank and United don't. So therefore you can actually hedge against one another. For example, if you've got some Luton assets like Doughty, Barkley, Adebayo, then by adding a United player to your team this week, you're still almost certainly getting a player in Gameweek 29 between both teams. 4% of buying Garnaccio this week. On to chips then. So 7% have used their second wildcard now, and 4% have got theirs active this week. A whopping 92% have used their triple captain now, almost entirely used on Haaland last week, which was a bit underwhelming. Those that still have theirs are going to be rubbing their hands together with a potential gain in another week. So Lanky looks an obvious choice in Gameweek 28. So Root Cause is one of the experts with his wildcard active. He's got Ryer in goal, Gabriel Dawson in power and defence, Saka, Foden, Garnacho and Huang in midfield, Solanke, Haaland and Watkins up top, with Kelleher, Van Hex, Nessie and Salah on the bench. Here's what you had to say. Gameweek 25 didn't go to plan, and now with a blank Gameweek upon me, with doubts for De Bruyne and Cher, and potential benchings for Foden and Estupinian, along with the blanks I already had, I find myself staring at minus eight or minus 12, maybe even minus 16 to get full 11. I assessed the short term fixtures, up to double game at 28 and beyond, and the potential of free hit 29, I decided that for my team it made sense to go now. 
Yes, we'll know more on Gamic 27, but I feel like an attack Gamic 26, I still have a strong team for Gamic 27 and 28. With a free hit in Gamic 29, I still allow myself enough transfers to position myself well for future double game weeks, including a bench boost in Gamic 37. I've gone with Salah from the off, as I fully believe he will be fit for Gamic 27, and I've also allowed enough in the bank to get Sun for Gamic 27 also. That would mean I have Saka, Sun, Salah, Haaland and Watkins as the big hitters both sides of the free hit, along with Solanke for his double coming up, and Watkins will eventually move to Tony when the fixtures change. Whilst the defence might seem weak, it has Gabriel who's a no-brainer, and power to cover Villa's good fixtures and three times players who offer good rotation for the foreseeable. I've gone with Hechan over Neto, I think he's going to be more of a focal point for the team and can be a nightmare for defences when he's on his game, and Garnacho gives me a cheap route into a United team who are now coming into form and they both offer good rotation with other players going forward. Big 4 FPL also has his wildcard active and he's lined up a bit differently. He's got Ariola, Trippier, Gabriel Aitnori, Neto Foden, Saka and Wang, and then Watkins, Solanke and Haaland up top. And on his bench is Neto, Palmer, Bell and Van Heck. Here's what he had to say. I had 11 players for the blank game week pre wildcard, but I felt going a week early buys me better players this week and for the long term, knowing that I always plan to free him game week 29. Triple Wolves, but I have 7.6 mil in the bank to go Neto or Wang to Salah next game week and likely 8 Nori to another Bournemouth defender in the blank game week. Most other players pick themselves, with the core foundation being Haaland, Saka, Palmer, Watkins, Solanke, Trippi and Gabriel, and the money to add Salah to that list. Ultimately, I'm set up for the blank game week this week, I'm set up to get Salah back, and I'm set up for double game week 28, and the free hits prepare for game week 29 if needed, and 34 or 37 are far enough away that I've got 4 free transfers from 30 to 34 to prepare, thus I feel the wildcard isn't a bad shout right now. My current rank is 23k, so I'm hoping a Wolves party against Sheffield United alone can give me a mini boost before other wildcards are played. And whilst I'm still prepared enough to match their wildcards, that gives me the benefit of more data on future blanks and doubles. Best of luck with the wildcard, gents. So moving on to Experts Captaincy. 94% are back in Haaland for captaincy this week, 4% Saka, and one manager is on Huang Captain. Not a huge amount between them this week, with decreasing ownership as we move down the list. Wang's an incredible differential captain this week if that's your playstyle. As far as FPL reviews projections, Haaland's on 6.8, Huang 6.6 .6, and Saka 6.5. No one on Watkins captain this week who is second on the goal scorer odds with a 45% chance of scoring any time and Haaland top of a 57% chance. The captain poll has just gone up on the community tab of my channel so get your votes in after the video. Moving on to the experts team for Gaming 26, lots of changes this week as a result of all the transfer activity. It's Ariola in goal, double Arsenal defence with Gabriel Saliba and Estupinyam, the midfield is Foden, Wang, De Bruyne and Saka, a front three of Haaland, Watkins and Solanke, Haaland captain is Saka Vice. The bench is Dubravka, Taylor, Pedro Porro and Palmer. Scraping 11 out this week like most of us, De Bruyne did miss City's second game in the double as a precaution. He reportedly trained yesterday but being managed. Those of us with Taylor are going to be hoping that he comes into the start in 11 after returning from injury off the bench last match. Moving on to experts tips and insight for Gamic 26, here's what the experts had to say this week. TomTom Tom KD is also wildcarded and he says, wildcarding this week to hopefully give me advantage over the next 4 weeks, free hit Gamic 29. Maybe it'll cost him 34, but there's a chance it won't looking at the potential doubles there. I'm taking a chance on double arsenal attack rather than defence, double walls for this week, on the bench Palmer who's a placeholder for the future, and Solanke to come in next week, I've gone for a one week punt on Hoyland facing a Polina list Fulham. Jason Fleming says, albeit cup dependent, with only one player as it stands playing in blank game week 29, I fully accept that a chip will need to be utilised in either that week or a wildcard in game week 27. As such I'm encouraged to go for assets such as Wolves midfielders now even if they blank in game week 29. Benny M90's current plan is Bailey in for Jota and he says the midfield move is subject to late team news, other options are Huang, Bowen, Louise and Neto. Andrew Debenham says over the next few weeks different chip strategies will hopefully really open the game up. For those planning to free hit like me in Gamic 29 it's important to have core essentials of a Gamic 30-31 team ready, therefore the likes of Saka, Palmer and Gordon are going nowhere. Alex says I can get 11 players for the Gamic with one free transfer but that's with De Bruyne and Estupinian who are both question marks over their minutes. I don't want to take a hit for a very short term game so I'll probably accept my fate with those two players, looking good for the following game week. Forza Inter says, I'm still debating the merits of taking a minus 8 to field 11 players or a minus 4 to field 10 players. Unfortunately the Crystal Balls firmware says it's still updating. 
Thanks very much for watching. Subscribe if this was helpful so you can follow this series every week. We'll be live here for the deadline on Saturday. See you then.